Here we have a tank of water. We're going to disturb the water by dropping in these logos and the waves from that disturbance propagate out towards the boundary of the tank. Now imagine that the walls of the tank have the ability to record the waves and can then vibrate to recreate those waves in reverse order. In doing so, it creates the time reversed wave which will propagate as if we're watching a video of the original disturbance in reverse until ultimately it recreates the indent of those logos at the instant that it hit the water. Such wave tanks do in fact exist. In a similar fashion, now imagine a room where all the walls, the floors, the ceiling are microphones. At the center of the room, a sound is made. Wave propagates out towards the boundary where it's recorded at all positions. That recording is reversed and replayed through speakers from all positions and in doing so creates the time reversed acoustic wave which propagates backwards into the horn just as it started. For radio and microwaves the same idea applies except now instead of speakers and microphones we've got antennas. The source wave propagates out, it's recorded, flipped in time and then replayed from all positions to recreate the original source. Such so-called time reversal mirrors exist for both acoustic waves and also for microwaves. But this is more than just a neat trick. The creation of time reversed waves enables you to focus waves to locations that would otherwise be impossible. So let's say we've got our wave scattering object here. It could be something like frosted glass or optical fiber, smoke, fog, biological tissue, something which scatters the wave but doesn't absorb it. If we try to inject a traditional wave into the object from the outside, it quickly becomes scattered near the surface. We can't focus inside the object. However, if we create a time reversed wave, it can behave as if the source originated inside the object itself and then propagated out. You send in the time reversed wave, which looks pre-scattered, and then the scattering inside the object itself is what focuses it. And that's actually the context in which this was first demonstrated, using time-reversed acoustic waves to destroy kidney stones inside the body from the outside. So if we have a light beam, an optical wave, it comes in from the source, gets scattered, and we'd like to be able to record and replay this light wave in reverse like we could for water, acoustics, and microwaves. But that's not previously being possible. Water waves, acoustics, microwaves, these waves all oscillate on time scales of seconds to nanoseconds, which means you can record and generate such waves using electronics. But optical waves oscillate on time scales thousands of times shorter than that, picoseconds or femtoseconds, well outside the capabilities of electronics. And that's one of the reasons the generation of time reversed optical waves requires a very different approach. To do so, we've created an optical system based around a computer-controlled hologram. This hologram, when combined with the rest of the optical system it's attached to, encodes the properties of the scattered time-reverse wave we want to generate. So steering in the up-down direction lets us control the shape of the beam, and steering in the left-right direction lets us control what time that beam shape will be generated. Taken together, as we scatter the light in arbitrary combinations of up, down, and left, right, we'll be creating arbitrary shaped 3D beams in space and time. It travels through additional optics and becomes this 2D light sheet. One axis of the sheet represents space. This is the beam shape we want to generate. And then the other axis represents the time we want to generate that beam shape at. And you can think of this light sheet kind of like a play a piano roll or sheet music where instead of the piano keys representing the different notes that we want to generate, they represent the different beam shapes that we want to generate. So we've got a finite number of beam shapes to choose from and the light sheet specifies what combinations should be played at what times. That light sheet then gets fed through the part of the system which converts that sheet into the corresponding 3D beam with the desired beam shapes arriving at the desired times. So in this example here, it's generating a clock hand of light that's spinning around in time, which when you look at it all at once, like we're doing here, looks like a piece of corkscrew pasta. If you like, you can also think of it in a different way. So with a traditional hologram, we have a 2D 
flat hologram and it diffracts light such that when we illuminate it with a reference beam, it generates the surface of a 3D object. So our device here can be thought of as adding an additional dimension to that. So it's a 3D hologram for a 4D object. Instead of a 2D hologram, now we've got a 3D sort of volumetric hologram, which when you illuminate it with a pulse of reference beam, will generate the surface of a 3D object which changes in time. So with this new ability to shape light completely in both space and time, we can now generate time-reversed waves in optics.